quiet because I have one baby sleeping and one baby screaming. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear her in the background, but um, trying to go to sleep. So I thought I'd just take this time to pick up the camera because I just want to be real with you guys. This placement, we just got them last night. I don't know what it is, but it has been so hard. I have not, this is the first time I've been able to hold it together and not cry. And I just don't know what it is. It's been really hard. I told Robert that I feel like I'm failing. I don't know, I think it's harder maybe because it's two. Um, and two that need my full attention and I can't give my full attention to both. And it's so hard to try to figure out what they need because they don't talk, which is, I mean, that's fine. That's, I'm used to that. I work at daycare. But when you're expected to provide for them food and drink and you don't know what they eat, Or when they eat, or if they take a bottle, or if they don't take a bottle, if you're if they're hungry, if they're not hungry, you just don't know. Because when they drop them off, they don't tell you anything. They just drop them off with clothes, and that's the clothes they're wearing, really, and that's about it. And they don't know anything about the children. So the baby is currently in her crib crying because I tried to give her a bottle, she wouldn't take it. I tried to feed her, she wouldn't eat. I changed her so she's dry and there's just nothing else I can do. I tried to pick her up and hold her and she just scratched at my face and kicked and screamed. So I don't know what else to do. I know she's tired because she did fall asleep for like five minutes. And she kept kicking her feet and I couldn't hold her so I put her in the crib and this has been going on now for maybe 15 minutes. I told Robert that I just can't handle it. It's, it's too much and I feel really bad. I feel like people are going to be disappointed in me. I don't want people to be disappointed in me but I just can't handle it. I've been crying like this all day and I just can't do it. And Robert has to be at work, which is fine, you know, he has to work. But it's hard being here by myself and not knowing what to do. I have always known that I wanted to be a mom ever since I was little. And I love caring for kids. I've been, in, you know, a live-in nanny and I work at a daycare. And after having Little Bug, I've even started questioning, like, do I want kids? Am I, am I supposed to be a mom? Maybe that's why I never got pregnant, because I just I can't do it I don't know I think we're gonna take a little break and next time not get two at a time because it's really really hard to take two on because with little bug yeah we still had to figure out what he ate and what he drank and that was hard but now this is times two they can't tell they can't talk they can't tell you anything and they're at the age where they should be eating or the the baby she's only nine months so she could be eating table food she could be eating baby food she could be on a bottle and we've tried I've tried everything and she's she ate breakfast but that's about it she hasn't had a bottle and she didn't eat any lunch and it's now two o'clock 
I'm just trying to be real with you and I hope people aren't disappointed and um, thinking that we're awful foster parents because I don't think we are. Um, Robert was saying that we have to let people know how we're feeling because if not we're gonna go crazy and we really need to do what's best for the kids we don't want them to get too attached to us and then you know a month down the road we're still struggling really bad like this and then have to send them somewhere so unfortunately we're trying to find them a new home and I feel really really awful about it But I just don't know what else to do. Hey, what's going on guys? Um, I am home from work now and Kaylin's here with me. And the two little girls, um, they are, they're not here. They, um, we found another foster family for them. And it's kind of like... The way fostering works is if you're within uh, a group like what we are, we're kind of within a network, um, we called our representative and our representative called around and found someone within our network to take them in. Um, and they're in a really good place. We're really excited for them because the people who took them in have three older daughters. The youngest kid was 13 years old and they just went up from there so when they were leaving like the mother had her hands completely free and was able to do whatever she needed to do so it's great that she has that support system and that help within the home um because you need help with these kids you need like literally it's just me and kaylin and when i'm at work it's just kaylin by herself a nine month old is like having two kids by yourself and then on top of that a two-year-old who earlier today tried to feed my dog a Tootsie Roll. It's not that they were bad kids and it's not that we wanted them to go. I think a lot of it had to do with we really underestimated how we were gonna feel after Little Bug left. We did it before where we found out what he liked and we found out, you know, his preferences. It helped a whole lot that he was able to tell us what his preferences were. And so with this, neither one of them were talking right the little girl couldn't tell you anything and then her younger sister obviously couldn't tell you anything it's just so incredibly stressful trying to figure out their preferences trying to figure out what they eat you know when is their nap time um do they drink out of a bottle do they drink out of the cup with a straw do they drink out of a 360 cup she didn't know how to use that so you know it's just all these things like you're trying to figure out and you have to figure it out quick because if not the kid's gonna go hungry so it's just incredibly stressful incredibly stressful and on top of that i if you don't follow us on instagram you should um instagram and facebook because we've been keeping people really up to date on that and i was telling kaylin what they teach you in foster care class they teach you that the kid is gonna come in and destroy your home. They teach you that the kid's gonna be abusive to your dogs. You know, they teach you that the kid is going to run away and join the circus. <laughs> literally, right? That's, yeah. they, literally, they said that in the foster care class. That they were gonna have behavioral issues. Behavioral issues, that they were gonna be these terrible, deplorable children and what they didn't tell you is that these kids are going to come into your home and you're going to fall in love with them and you're going to treat them like you're they're your own and they're going to fall in love with you and you're going to build routines and you're going to build rapport and you're going to <sighs> they didn't tell you that you're going to fall hard for these kids they didn't tell you that the state is gonna call and give you less than 24 hour notice that they're taking the kid away. FYI, again, another reason to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Little Bug is gone. Um, we were supposed to find out this coming Monday, uh, October 31st, 
if Little Bug was going to go back to his parents or not. And we were told there's a 50-50 chance. Well, that was on the Monday before Halloween. We were told that. On Wednesday, they called us and said, absolutely, 100% Little Bug's going back home. And so we're thinking, okay, Monday? No. Tomorrow. Morning. This kid, we... We we don't have kids, and we invested all of ourselves into this kid, and we poured our hearts into him, and we absolutely loved him, and he loved us back, and I just, on the, on the parent visit, I, I don't think I said this in the video, but on the parent visit, after that parent visit, all he said on Tuesday, was you leave me you leave me and it breaks my heart thinking that i just took him back and left him again and it's like you're trying to you drop him off on one day in the morning and you pick up two other kids the next night and we took them to target and bought all kind of stuff for these two little girls because they came with nothing and we're walking around Target and it's like I feel like it's almost like let's say you were married okay me and my spouse we have our favorite places we go to me and Caitlin we have our favorite places we go to it would be like the day after she passed away if I went with some other woman to all of our favorite places you just feel gross inside and you your stomach's in knots and you know it's not right i just i had no clue i had no clue like i thought in my head oh maybe this will be hard yeah maybe i know i thought i was doing fine <sighs> i thought you were doing really good too with little bug i mean like i was okay with him i'm okay i was okay with him leaving he was happy i saw him and he was happy with his sisters he was happy with his mom so that was good i was fine but I just think that when we got on that routine and then we had one night to ourselves and then to jump in with two children was just, it was too much. It was too much. We should have known it was too much. I should have known it was too much. It was my fault. It wasn't. It was my fault because I want to say yes to everyone and they call me. They, the DSS worker called me. There's so many... Like, you want to say yes, and you want to help them all, and you want to be good for every one of them. And someone told us that it's good just to jump right in and go to another kid, and just kind of like work through it. But, no. I mean, I don't want to compare it to a death in the family, but honestly, that's, that's, I mean, a mild version of that. I've had a lot of death in my family. It's... A small version of that. It is a grieving process. It's a grieving process. There's a grieving process. And... It's really hard. Anyway, all that to say, we are childless. Um, and we're probably going to stay that way for a little while. Until we can work through this. I had no idea it was going to be so stressful. Like... I knew in my head, everyone says, oh, it's so hard, how, and someone even asked us, one person even asked us, is like, how do you not, how do you not feel heartbroken when they leave? And I'm like, no, we do. 100%, we are heartbroken when we got so attached to him. That's the only kid I've ever had, you know, like, that's the only kid that's ever been in our house. Sorry this was long. I think I'm going to put this up first and then I have a lot of footage of us and Little Bug together and I'm going to make a kind of a video like a goodbye Little Bug video. I secretly hope maybe one day he'll come back into foster care and we'll be able to get him. But at the same time, obviously I want him to be with his family and be loved and cared for and be happy. So anyway guys, if you're doing foster care, if you're thinking about doing foster care, no, it is hard. 
But don't let this scare you. But don't let it scare you because... You know, we did have a really great time with Little Bug. And we're not saying that we're done forever. It's just we need time to grieve him leaving. Yeah. So, um... This is probably the most honest vlog you will watch today on YouTube. So, we try to be very real with you. We always have been. Um, these are real emotions. These are real things going on. We don't sugarcoat much at all. So, alright. See you next time. Praise